thanks for tuning into countdown my name is neeraj chai and the next one hour we'll talk about all the factors that are impacting the markets in the session today uh, we are doing reasonably okay for the markets you would have to say and banks too are participating which is why the 1.7% up move in the nifty and the 1.5% up move in the nifty bank uh, so the sensex and the nifty doing well nifty is doing well let's first talk about our markets then talk about international markets and then get in our guests so results in, i'll start off with the losers the results impact being seen on axis bank down about 4 4.5% it was a strong stock had run up ahead of the numbers and is now correcting that is the key point when it comes to axis bank in the session so 3.5% lower for the last one month it's gained about 21% after this correction that tells you the kind of moves that have happened in this one the other one is hul which is down about 2.7% in the session today big gain again over the last one month over the last three month period has stayed rock solid in all of this carnage but this block deal possibilities and we'll get anto antony in a bit to talk about this is clearly having its impact on hul strength continues though for financials bajaj finance hdfc both of them are doing very well and hdfc bank is participating today remember in the trade setup today i was mentioning that how it's very important for hdfc in hdfc hdfc bank and kotak bank to participate for this rally to move higher kotak isn't participating in the ajmer gusto but i think hdfc bank is doing its bit uh, there are strong moves across the specialty chemical stocks yet again maybe not as much for aarti but deepak nitride and virati organic certainly doing well and then a couple of other names the likes of strides pharmaceuticals hester bio a sale all of them doing rather well for themselves there is some talk of some package coming in for the par discoms and maybe the lenders and that's why pfc rdc both of them are up and about in the session today what is looks slightly wobbly today though is pharma i mean strides not withstanding pharma has taken a bit of a back seat torn pharma ipca labs apollo hospitals all of them are in the red last but not the least the world markets europe marginally in the green and the us futures are trading in the green ahead of the gdp and the fmc data Well, let's get in Manav Chopra with his thoughts on how he's seeing the market structure. Actually, I can't quite place the tweet that Manav put out yesterday. But Manav, excuse me for not exactly remembering that. Let me just ask you: How do you see these three strong days of an up move that we've seen in the markets? Uh, not too many people probably anticipated such a uh, sharp uptick in the last three days after after the rally that we've seen already. What happens next? Uh, uh, see, Neeraj. Actually, we have been quite bullish since the levels of 8,000. And uh, looking at the overall scenario, we were expecting this move to actually see some legs towards the levels of 9,500 to 9,600 odd. My current stance is that since we are nearing to those levels, and it is very difficult to anticipate where the market would take a halt. I believe uh, we are nearing to an important level of 9,600, uh, and anything above. Uh, uh to that range you know we could see some sort of choppy uh, traction since tomorrow is monthly expiry and the close uh, there are uh, some short covering that is happening so i think interesting fact would to uh, would be to see what happens uh, at the data tomorrow and the week from there but um, i believe this is a good time in the range of 9600 to 97 9800 is a good time to book profits get light into the markets and probably if there are some news uh, investment or any some policy updates and then one should re uh, uh, initiate or get uh, itself reallocated in, into the markets uh, and even in this scenario we have seen a lot of legard moves happening recently in fact nifty is one index which is forming a higher high but has not been confirmed by bank nifty there is a divergence in bank nifty so for now i think the breadth will be a question for uh, times to come forward and it's a good time to start reducing uh, your aggressive longs and uh, be light in the market at least for next coming trading sessions hmm okay so that's the call uh, from manav do we have amar singh i think with us um, amar if you can hear me what is your thought okay i think we'll get it in moments from now manav in light of that uh, uh, if you are indeed advising getting light a little bit what is it that you are doing on specific stocks today on the specifics uh, neeraj i think it as a space i think would be a bellwether uh, into the markets for at least next couple of weeks uh, uh, and uh, given in this scenario where we also expect usdnr to depreciate slightly so it would be one sector which could see some sort of a momentum so keeping that in place since the it index has given a breakout so a short term trading bet 
uh, would be a buy on NIT Technologies. In fact, this is one stock also in the weekly perspective, which has been continuously forming a bullish structure and minor higher bottom since past six weeks. So given a choice, I, uh, you know, uh, with the risk reward ratio in play, this is one stock which is very well placed. It's a buy with a stop loss of 1120 on the low side for an upside target of 1400. My second call would be a sell on Marico. In fact, from the FMCG space, this could be one of the contra bets that I would want to take. It has a very high risk reward uh, a ratio for going short. In fact, we have already seen Marico rally from its recent lows of 240 and, you know, kind of facing a strong resistance uh, near the levels of 300, 310. So there are multiple uh, uh, resistance we've witnessed, volume confirmation, bearish candlestick formation, which indicates there is selling pressure happening at the high level. So this would be a sell. Uh, uh, Marico, uh, even at the current levels and rise towards the levels of 300, stop loss of 310, expecting lower targets of 260. Mm. Okay, uh, Amar Singh is with us. Amar, what's your market stance uh, today after this move that we've seen? Can we do more? Would you trade this up move? Yeah, very good afternoon. Uh, uh, see, what we're seeing in the markets is definitely a very strong uh, pullback. And uh, the markets have been sustaining because if you look at Nifty over the last uh, almost 10 to 12 trading sessions, we've seen it uh, trading positive, yes, but at the same time, uh, some choppy trading sessions uh, was being witnessed. But today again has been a very sharp uh, up move. So uh, technically speaking, somewhere around 9600 90, uh, levels is a level of resistance for uh, Nifty because uh, that technically is a very crucial uh, resistance around the weekly charts. So we could witness some uh, profit booking there, but the short term indicators still are positive and strong. So that's the reason we are seeing this uh, uh, pullback in the markets. Talking about specific stocks, I would say uh, one stock to look at is HDFC Bank. Uh, if you look at HDFC Bank, what we are seeing here is that uh, HDFC Bank seems to have formed a, a, a very strong base and uh, it is currently trading around 978 odd levels. So uh, if I look at the charts uh, on the uh, on the short term charts, it continues to be positive and the other time frames it is moving from oversold territory. So this is one stock one can look at, but only towards a pullback, not, the, not at the current levels. So any pullback towards 950, 955 ideally can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss of 921 and a target of 1,000 on the upside. And the second stock to look uh, at is Castrol, Castrol India. Uh, what we are seeing in this particular stock is that uh, this stock uh, on the long-term charts also seems to have bottomed out and it has taken very strong support levels. And uh, technically on the daily charts, uh, the trend is strong, but yes, it's moved in overbought uh, territory. So uh, still one can look at on any uh, correction towards 124, 125 ideally can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss of 119.8 and a target of uh, 134 in the short term. Interesting. We don't have too many usual suspects amongst the stock calls given, but we will try and uh, talk about those as well. By the way, um, okay, I'm tempted to ask about HUL, but we'll do that once Anto uh, comes on board and talks about uh, his, uh, his call, his story. So we'll do that in just moments from now. Manav, uh, uh, can the... Up I mean, for somebody, let's say, who bought Bujaj Finance last Friday at rock bottom prices, is this uh, a rally good enough to book profits or do you think it can extend itself? Uh, I, I feel it's a good time to actually hold on to your call on Reliance, uh, on, on Bajaj Finance. Uh, and uh, important thing is that, you know, there has been a, a good move from its recent lows. If you look at the weekly chart, uh, Neeraj, there is a very important underlying that we have to understand that this week, uh, Bajaj Finance made a lower low compared to the previous week and it is closing above the highs of the previous week. So technically it's a very strong uh, bullish formation which is called as an outside bar. And usually this formation uh, is, uh, you know, uh, there are multiple setups which can uh, see uh, multiple legs into it of short covering rally. So mainly this is a short covering rally would also have a positive uh, bullish stance coming in the coming week. So I believe uh, given an opportunity somebody is holding should definitely continue to hold and could see upside move towards the levels of 2500 to 2600 levels. Okay, well, one man called it uh, last week when we were talking to him. Gurmeet Chadda was emphatic that people should not sell Bajaj Finance as those valuations. That's not to say that the pain is out of the system as yet, but let's get him in this conversation because Gurmeet would be smiling right now knowing him. Uh, and not just otherwise, I mean, even otherwise he would be smiling, but that fact that his conviction has gone right. Gurmeet, Thanks so much for joining in. Good calls yesterday, fundamentally good conviction, more importantly. The point though, Gurmeet, does this short-term up move seem a bit overstretched? Does it seem too fast too soon? 
Uh, it is difficult to say, uh, you know, on the short term price movement. And, you know, uh, you know, I was drawing comfort from two, three factors. One was that, which I was telling you that, uh, you know, the, the credit profile uh, of the customers they lend to is a combination of customers, you know, who seek uh, cashbacks and interest free EMIs uh, and, and people who need uh, uh, EMIs. So it's not, it's not a credit profile like, I mean, it's, it would be wrong to compare it with you know, unsecured loans, uh, MFAIs, and and, and others. Uh, the uh, the the liability side uh, looked strong. There was 15,000 crore cash. Their their average deposit, uh, you know, tenure is around three years. That's another 20 to 23,000 crores. And I was I have a strong conviction they'll be able to also you know manage rollovers in these tough times in the bond market. And I've been saying that the bond markets give gives you signals where the stress is. Some of the NBSCs we saw trades happening at you know mid uh, mid teens uh, you know in some of the stress cases. But as finance was there was a marginal uh, increase in terms of uh, you know the trades happening in the bond market. So that that was also a bit of a comfort. Uh, and I, you know my my view is that if you see more dips in the stock because I have a I have a a decade plus kind of a horizon in this. I am personally invested in this for last eight nine years. So, you know, any good corrections are obviously uh, still as after this is still a two and a half, three times book. So any correction is welcome for a long term investor in my view. And I said it's a combination of a consumption and finance stock. It's, it's wrong to only look at it as a as a pure finance play. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, fair call. Uh, Gurmeet, uh, the other uh, factor is what's happening within this uh, uh, this metals pack today, Macquarie came out with this note. They believe that at near these tough valuations, there is merit in trying to own them, even though they are cyclical in nature. Would you go out and own, try and invest into any of these large cap metal names? Everything is up today. Everything in metals is up today. See, Neeraj, uh, you have to be brave to take that tactical call. Metals will never be a fundamental call in the portfolio. So if you see, uh, you know, whenever the the Fed has printed and whenever the balance sheet has been expanded three four months into the expansion uh, you know we, we see uh, you know uh, the, the dollar index then again you know retracing or correcting maybe 8 10 15 percent we don't know you know probably a, a currency guy and, and a chartist can tell you better uh, but if you keep expanding the balance sheet Fed balance sheet will soon be seven trillion dollars what they have printed in last three weeks is is more than what they printed in the entire 2008 2013 and and, and other events at some point of time you know uh, uh, commodities and and other risk assets will get uh, you know a uh, bit of a replacement and my my view is as you rightly pointed out a lot of them are available at less than replacement costs so you need to figure out maybe good groups, you know, groups with, you know, slightly, everybody's leverage. You'll not find metal companies which are lesser leveraged, but better groups will be able to withstand this uh, available at, you know, replacement cost and take a tactical view around it. Maybe add on a, on a one or two month uh, staggered basis and, the, and then have, a, have an upside clear in terms of what levels you want to exit. You know, viewers, the other thing is uh, quality franchises, uh, when they come, out and give some views about their business outlook going ahead. It will be stupid to scoff at them. And I think at 800, uh, when people were writing off none other than HDFC Bank, and again, I'm not one to make a prediction that this is the end of the pain. I have no idea whether HDFC Bank will go down to 700, 600, 500, or will it go up to 1400? All I'm trying to tell you is at the price to book valuation that it was available then, and the management was pretty confident about how the book will evolve. It would have been foolhardy to write it off. A name as safe as HDFC Bank has given people more than 20% returns. Uh, agreed, the Nifty is bounced back to 25% too, but it's a safe bet to probably make at some point of time on a valuation basis at times. And look at that HDFC Bank stock, 5.5% up today, 979 or 980, really strong showing by this one. Gurmeet, the other quick thought, uh, and I would want Amar Singh to come in as well on this later on, is on the specialty chemical names. and. Arti's guidance, Propel that stock up, Vinati Organics ahead of numbers moving up, Deepak Nitrite up 7%. They are going to make sanitizer, raw material, or whatever you have. I mean, these companies are proving that they are very nimble. They do not have too much of debt. And while earnings are, the P multiples are high, they are not stratospheric. Would you be buying there? Selectively, uh, uh, Neeraj, and as I said that, you know, this is a very wide space. So uh, you, 
you have to be careful on buying news based or covid stories and and looking at things fundamentally same for pharma stocks as well i mean you know and that scares me in the market when when people just buy uh, stuff basis of drug approval or basis of you know short term news uh, around them so our our uh, list uh, has arti it has navin floro uh, it has pi industries which is actually a combination of uh, it's not really pure specialty chemicals but you know combination of crams and agro agrochemicals and so our our top three bits are arti navin and, and pi i would be more keen to look at arti and pi on on pulse obviously the uh, pi industries you know the uh, the the price points may not be as lucrative as some of the some of the others are uh, but you know very very good biz, business very steady pre cash flows again quality management great track record of return ratios uh, very widely held by respective institutions and fund managers you know i often look at that in terms of the holding that in times like this you also need to see uh, you know some kind of institutional holding wherever it is available may not be available for all counters so uh, i would prefer arti and 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 pi industries uh, and navin floro uh, in that pack for now and and gradually you know uh, accumulate them over a period of time so will be the case with some of the pharma groups Okay. Uh, well, let's move on. I wanted to do a chart check, but we'll do that in a bit because I think the time is now for the big story of the day. GlaxoSmithKline PLC is getting ready to sell its stake in Hindustan Unilever. The drug maker recently got some stake in lieu of selling a portfolio of assets to HUL. Now, Anto Anthony of Bloomberg News has details about this. Uh, Anto, uh, good good afternoon. Thanks for joining in Neeraj here. Very important piece of news. Can you tell us what you're learning? Hi, Neeraj. Yeah, so Glaxo is planning to offload part or all of its 5.7 percent stake in Hindustan Unilever through a series of block trades, which could start as soon as next few days. So this 5.7 percent stake would currently be valued at around around 3.7 billion, and from what we understand, it should it would be offloaded in three or four tranches, and the bankers are already working on it, and investor appetite is being checked for this. So we are expecting the deals to start any time within the next few days. Sorry, I, I missed that, Anto. You, we are expecting this de- this offloading to start when in the next few days. You heard? I heard. Yes, that's right. In the next few days. Yeah. In the next few days, Anto, we do not have any indication about what the pricing could likely be, right? It would be very close to the. Um, we have Hindustan Unilever results tomorrow, so it should be very depending upon that. That would be one uh, key trigger, which. we are to see when it comes to where it will be priced and at what discount but broadly around 5% discount to the market price is what we are expecting uh, okay 5% market price to the 5% discount to the market price that we might have tomorrow post results or thereabouts uh, if i'm yeah. not wrong all right and a very important piece of news i must tell you it's circulating in all of these whatsapp groups as well thanks so much for breaking this and joining us today well this is important from a trade perspective as well as important as it is from the kind of supply that this creates now um, both fundamental and technical view with gurmeet chadda and manav chopra manav i'll come to you technically first before i go to gurmeet it's looks slightly weak today it's been weak now for the last three or four sessions because it's down about 4 or 5% uh, what would you do with an hul right now if somebody wants to trade hul what would you advise currently right now uh, uh, you know i also gave a sell on marico so basically fmcg as a space uh, i believe neeraj would get into a corrective consolidation mode uh, in next coming weeks uh, i don't see it showing a good amount of throttle they have already seen a good rally from its recent low so i believe there would be a short term sectoral rotation whereby short covering rally is likely to happen in bank nifty Uh, pharma and it now will become the next uh, uh, phase of bell weather there would be short term corrective declines coming in but uh, for for a very short term perspective there could be a dip of say another 2 to 5% in this space uh, as a whole now hul since it has already breached its important support of 2300 i believe the next level of support for this is close to 2100 and that is the time where any short term trader or a swing trader should get in uh, to buying at lower levels maybe uh, this decline looks more or less co- corrective in nature and uh, it 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 has not breached any important weekly support level so there's nothing to worry in terms of a trend but uh, the ideal scenario is to maintain a buy at least another 5 to 8% on the lower side okay you believe it could correct about 5 to 8% on the lower side yes okay gurmeet fundamentally these are not cheap stocks but 
what does an event like this typically do to the stock price? I mean, it's a large stake that GlaxoSmithKline is looking to sell. I'm sure they don't want to incur too many losses out here. They would ideally want it at the best price possible. But what's your sense about how these events unfold typically? So, Neeraj, I think it was some correction was due at the at the way you know the prices went up. People, you know, people don't tend to look at the portfolio. As I said again, you know. Uh, HUL only doesn't make uh, soaps, toiletries, and sanitizers. I mean, HUL has a diverse portfolio. Uh, you know, our family is now four decades into FMCG distribution in terms of our background. There is a lot of stress in uh, tier three, tier four pockets in terms of distribution reach. Uh, the non, non, non essential portfolio is doing very badly. Supply chains are disrupted. Uh, the demand for, uh, you know, your skin care, your hair care products has come down. So it's not that the entire 100 bucks is doing well for them. Obviously, there's a bit of a surge in soaps, toiletries, and, and processed food. So I think, my, you know, my view is that the, this is temporary. I think I think uh, the rural area uh, will be opened uh, earlier than, so what, one thing is clear, rural areas will do, uh, will lead the recovery, will be opened up earlier than urban. Any correction is welcome in HUL. You know, at one point of time, the entire market cap of HUL was equal to the entire auto sector and the entire pharma sector. Uh, it didn't make sense. So I'm not saying that the the, the actual stock will correct 30, 40 percent, but if it if it gives you 10, 20 percent correction, maybe you can add. Currently, not at these price levels. So you know you can continue to hold if you had that in your portfolio. And FMCG won't give you very uh, you know deep corrections in, in environments like this where you know there is a bit of a bias towards defensive names. Use any corrections to buy, not at this price. Mm, okay. Uh, the other thing I just want to check. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, Indianapolis housing is uh, correcting a bit. I think there is a Delhi High Court has stayed some interim relief um, given to the company. I wonder if Indianapolis housing would be correcting. We'll try and uh, check that stock as well before we get in the global guest. Just wondering, since NVFCs are so much in focus, Manav Chopra, you want to come in on Indianapolis housing finance? As a uh, Neeraj, you know, for uh, Neeraj, I will not be able to comment on the uh, Indianapolis housing ah. as a group, but. NBFCs, like we've spoken about Bajaj Finance, uh, looking at chart of Equitas and uh, uh, also Ujivan, you know, Equitas is something which is now showing some sort of, it's one of the high beta from this space and it has a resistance of 53 to 54 levels. So once Equitas manages to break above those levels, you would see a short term move. But if I have to pick one from this space uh, beside the India Bulls group, which I cannot comment on, definitely uh, Bajaj Finance is quite well placed for a short term uh, up move. Hmm. Okay, now, gentlemen, stay on. Uh, uh, let's try and uh, focus a bit on the globe as well because it's a big day today from a global perspective. Uh, we have uh, 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 US GDP data coming out and we'll have the Fed meet outcome as well. So the Fed meet outcome might be a foregone conclusion of sorts. I think Daniel Morris from BNP Paribas should be joining us any moment to talk about his thoughts on whether this could be a event that could be market disruptive in any fashion whatsoever or market conducive in any fashion whatsoever because uh, some of these outcomes would well probably be priced in as well. Um, so keep that at the back of your mind uh, that we have uh, two big data points that could or one big data point and one potentially very important commentary coming in later today and maybe the markets could react a bit uh, to both of these things in tomorrow's session. We are anyways very close to the April expiry as well. So that's the other thing that people have to bear in mind. Do we have Daniel Morris? I think we should have him in moments from now and we'll try and go there and try and get his perspective. Okay, I think just, we're just getting some issues patching his line that should happen in times like these. Maybe we'll just revisit that. Um, Gurmeet, before we thank you then, uh, an investment idea from your end before we get to the global piece. Uh, something that you are, are convinced about, you, you look at auto ancillary so closely, is that a pocket that you are even thinking of touching because it's almost an untouchable right now, even after the Mathis and Sumi uptake? Anirish, very selectively, uh, you know, uh, continue to be uh, uh, invested in Minda, Maruti and Bajaj Auto uh, in terms of the current portfolio. So uh, looking at uh, more bargain deals, not, not really aggressively buying, uh, did accumulate something uh, when Maruti was around 4,000 and there was a severe erosion even in, in Minda, but not, not of late. Um, one idea which I can, which I'm tracking very closely and I've been writing also about it is telecom. I think, I think Bharti looks to me the dark horse while too much uh, focus has gone into RAL post the, the Facebook deal. I think, I think, uh, you know, telecom in my view is headed for a 
or for a big big re rating uh, you know uh, there will be one quarter challenge because your physical recharges are down the uh, the digital recharges only make up for 40% there could be some stress on debt servicing also because uh, a large part of the uh, debt is is usd denominated so there could be some near term challenges with you know the lower end talk times also uh, the validity getting extended but my view is the arpu can cross 200 kind of levels over a 2 3 year two three quarter a lot of uh, action can happen uh, on lines of i'm not preempting anything but on lines of facebook uh, uh, geo there could be more uh, activity which can happen in that space so that is one area one should watch out from a long term investment uh, strategy good meet we we'll leave it at that thanks so much for taking the time out and being with us appreciate your time thank you um okay daniel morris of bnp pariva asset management with us as i said before it's important to get his view ahead of two very important data points or one important data point and one important fed meet outcome daniel good having you thanks for joining in what do you think is more important today because the fed has fired a lot of bazookas already would you rather watch out for the gdp numbers or even that is a foregone conclusion well you know certainly at this point gdp uh, as always is backward looking but even at this point having any backward looking information uh, is is more than we have otherwise i mean the challenge of the the current pandemic and the economic impact is we just have no historical precedent to evaluate what happens to the economy when you have these type of social distancing measures so even this figure for the first quarter of US GDP will help us a lot to try to estimate what's going to happen in the second quarter so i think at this point it actually is the gdp figure that'll be the most interesting particularly once we get the detail on on the different parts of the economy and how they've reacted so i think that's a key thing we're not anticipating so much from the fed i think they've they've done uh, probably out as much as they arguably need to do there's a lot of the mechanics clearly that need to be worked out particularly around loans to small businesses uh, but the fed has already purchased over a trillion dollars in treasuries over the last several weeks and you contrast that with the ecb which has said it's going to purchase a trillion euros of eurozone bonds over the whole year. So the Fed's been pretty aggressive and we think that's one reason you've seen the US stock market hold up relatively well. Mm. Uh, Daniel, anything in the commentary from Jerome Powell that you would watch out for? Can he say something that could either spook the market though I doubt that he has the lever to do that also, but can he say something that could uh, uh, maybe make the markets a bit more uh, give the markets a bit more comfort well if they did i i would almost be a bit concerned if that happened because the reaction we've had in the markets over the last several weeks you know from the lows uh, on the 23rd of march you've had a quite strong rebound uh, even if since then we've kind of bounced along within a range uh, but i think the markets assuming that governments globally you know not only in the us but in europe Uh, and Asia are going to be able to loosen restrictions and you know slowly get back to normal. Uh, now of course the concern is that you have one of two things happen instead. Either as the restrictions ease, infections rise, deaths rise and then governments have to reimpose the restrictions which I think is not currently priced in the market. Or alternatively and this isn't quite so bad but I think it's still a risk is that you are able to lift the restrictions but we don't have a virus we probably excuse me we don't have a vaccine and we probably won't for a while so that means consumers are not going to rush back to the shops they're not going to hop on a plane to go travel and so even with the restrictions lifted you don't get that big of a recovery in the economy and again i don't think that's reflected in equity prices so i think we need to wait uh and i probably actually don't want kind of boosting words from powell because i think that just increases the risk of a bigger correction down the line okay um daniel uh, one last question are you guys uh, investing right now some of the gunpowder that you might have been sitting on or or are you still waiting for the rainy day charlie munger uh what Sure, well a bit of both. Uh on tactically we are concerned about a correction so we have options in case there is a fall in the market. We think that's at least, you know, reasonably probable. 
uh, given those latter scenarios, pessimistic scenarios that I laid out. Nonetheless, broadly, we are overweight risk assets, we're overweight equities, uh, emerging markets in particular, uh, and overweight investment grade credit. So we think, you know, broadly speaking, this is still a time to be holding on to investments in risk assets, even if in the, the short term, say within the next month, we wouldn't be surprised to see a pullback, but we would use that to actually add to our overweight in risk. Okay, Daniel, we will leave it at that. Thank you so much Thank for taking the time out and, 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 and stay safe, more importantly. Thank you, All right, that's the view from BNP Paribas Asset Management. Uh, here are one more view, because Kimani of Carnelian Capital spoke to us earlier uh, for his thoughts on what to do in a scenario like this, where are the pockets that he's betting on and things that he believes present a multi-year growth story. Listen in. Yeah, of course, I think you know we are into un in unprecedented times and lots of uh, variables are at play. Of course, there was a one point in time extreme fear and panic, uh, which is kind of uh, in some sense receding. Uh, health crisis seems to be, uh, you know, have seen the peak and probably it's kind of slowly uh, tapering off. Uh, but the aftermath of impacts of or economic impact are, I think, going to last for. Uh, a uh, couple of quarters and the secondary um, or second or third order effect of this crisis i think will start manifesting in uh, more than many ways we have seen in oil and we have seen in many more you know aspects of the uh, economy or you know or asset prices so you know that this is this is uh, you know a time when we have to see a decisive action uh, by the government in terms of reviving the economic starting the economy uh, especially providing the working capital limits to the MSME and, you know, a fairly large part of the uh, business community who may not be able to revive if uh, for the want of funds and if they don't have money. So I think the quickest way to, you know, what is the quickest part government uh, takes uh, to revive the demand as well as the supply side? Because mind you, this time around, we have both supply and demand side kind of blockage. So unless both starts opening up, we will not see a significant revival in the demand. Uh, in the in the economic activity, hence uh, I believe that uh, uh, you know we will we will take some time, uh, probably you know uh, two to three quarters uh, to get back to you know in a decent shape and away from the economic collapse. Okay, um, because uh, I just wonder. So keeping in mind all of these things, are you a buyer here or are you circumspect? We, we are the long only fund, so we in fact bought when market kind of uh, you know were down, and we are still sitting on almost about 15 to 17 percent cash. Uh, so anytime there's a panic, you know we will add to it, uh, because I think times like this also offers good opportunity to buy businesses uh, which you otherwise would not get it uh, at the prices which you would want to get in. Uh, so I think you know you you have uh, the only thing you have to keep in mind at this point in time that don't get into businesses which which can go to, you know, sort of lead to balance sheet risk or bankruptcy risk. As long as you can survive this cycle and come out of this cycle, I think, you know, you will, you will, be, you will be okay. So we, 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 we kind of are buying businesses which are solid, balance sheet solid, and, you know, when, when things come back, they will come back with a lot of, lot of uh, uh, you know, momentum. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get in some queries uh, from uh, our experts, uh, the viewer queries that we need to answer, something that we do every time this time of the show. CB Chakravarti is asking for a call on ITC. Uh, Amar, would you want to come in? I don't know whether CB has a long or a short here, but what's your thought? Yeah, uh, looking at ITC, what we are seeing is that uh, the stock is now uh, gone into some consolidation. Currently, it's trading around 182 odd levels. Uh, whereas on the upside, it has got very strong resistance coming around 193, 195 zone. So if he's long then, and if he's uh, uh, bought uh, at the recent uh, lows, then he should look at booking profits anywhere between 195 or and 193 levels because 200 would also act as a psychological resistance for the stock. And looking at the long-term trend, uh, I would say the stock uh, will meet with resistance around those levels. Okay. Now, uh, I... Ravi Khatri, and then we will take in the view or question from Mohammad Ali of Ambuja. But Ravi Khatri is asking for a view on SBI cards. Actually, I think Ravi will just have to wait for our fundamental guests to come in before we answer about SBI cards. But I can 
tell you this, Ravi, in the brokerages which have come out with the notes recently have said that uh, at, at valuations, when, when the stock was close to 500, that they believe that uh, the, the growth trajectory is not died down completely. And if indeed uh, the economic revival happens slightly sooner rather than believe uh, earlier, then uh, the stock provides good attractive long-term prospects. But that's from an institutional investor's perspective. So you've got to be mindful of that. But that's the view that the brokerages have expressed on SBI cards, Ravi. And now, Mohammad Ali is asking for a technical view on Ambuja cement. So, Manav, it's an interesting one. Yesterday, I think, um, yesterday, Brijesh or somebody gave a convincing short call there. I'm wondering, though, the results are very good. Credit Suisse has said that they would buy it. Uh, and cement companies haven't displayed bad numbers thus far. What's What are the charts telling you? See, specifically for Ambuja, Neeraj, I feel uh, the short-term trend is on the upside. Uh, and I believe there would be some short-term more legs that can uh, see uh, the prices taking higher. So on the upside, the important resistance, uh, uh, the short-term resistance would be at 170 once if it breaks. I think the major hurdles for Ambuja for a medium-term perspective would be in the range of 185 to 190. I don't see stock going above that those levels. So I don't know what his price is, but I believe if uh, if he's about break even at those levels or he, if he makes some profits around the levels of 180, 190, I would definitely feel that that would be a good level to uh, exit your longs and or remain light in the stock because that was the previous monthly and weekly support from which the stock actually breached uh, the important levels and we've seen the decline. So any uh, pullback towards those zones, I think it's a time that one should uh, reduce their long positions. I feel short term trading opportunity for 4-5% not worth the risk reward, but uh, exit at higher levels. Exit at higher levels. That's the a quick, a quick summary of that answer. Okay. Shivank. Paliwal is asking for a view on KEI Industries. Yogesh Mehta is with us. I'll toss that question over to him. Yogesh, you track Polycap so closely. I'm sure you track the peers and competitors as well. Any thoughts on KEI? Uh, yeah, with the current level KEI, and uh, I think sub-300 level, if you compare with the valuation with, uh, uh, of course, Havels is not comparable, but uh, with, between uh, Polycap and KEI, the second, uh, second uh, preferred would be KEI. But however, I think the last time result was uh, in line with expectation wherein polycap results are much better and uh, market share is also 16%. So KEI, I would say with the price, yes, uh, if, uh, in, if there is an investor who is holding on, can hold on for some more time and may maybe we can see again uh, 500 plus in next uh, one and a half years because uh, the infrastructure, the demand and everything going to be there in terms of the business they are into. So I don't foresee that there is any threat further from this level. Yogesh, Abdul Hakim is asking for a view on the auto stocks, Aisha, Bajaj Auto or Maruti. Any thoughts on any one of them, not all the three? Uh, yeah, if I have to select I, uh, from this three, then I would say that Bajaj post uh, the management said that they are uh, 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 restarting their plant with 50% capacity right now. So that is one on the preferred way because Maruti four wheeler, I think post lockdown or after opening the lockdown, I don't force it. Demand will improve at least for next uh, uh, till Diwali or Navratri. So one can avoid clearly, but if you are getting Maruti around 4,000 rupees or 4,000, 4,500, then it is the best buy because uh, Bajaj Auto has already moved up from 1,900 odd level to 2,500. So I would say that uh, if you want to select from two wheelers and Hero Motor Cop, and if you want to have this uh, preferred list of Bajaj Auto, then one can go for that and four wheeler Maruti. Okay, you know, there's a bit of a divergent trend now between HDFC and Bajaj Finance because Bajaj Finance has cooled off from the highs of the day, but HDFC is going strong, 7% higher, 1837. The last, uh, uh, I mean, it, it's not necessarily at the best move in the last few days, but I think today's move is, is quite stunning, really. It's trading at the highest point of the day, almost a trending move in the session today. Um, Manu, you want to come in with a quick thought on HDFC? Uh, would you trade it afresh at these levels? Uh, see, the risk reward for a very short term trade is not there, Neeraj. We've already seen a good rally in last couple of days from its lows of 1600. Important uh, structure update would be the prices are coming from its triangle formation. Usually it's a, a short term consolidation pattern. Whenever it breaks out, we see a trending rally. Uh, given our choice, I think uh, entering on dips would be a good ideal strategy. Seven, 1750 uh, odd or 1780 would be a good levels to initiate long positions. Eventually, in the near term perspective, a rise towards 1900, 1950 is likely. 
Okay. Uh, you know, the other uh, beautiful move that we're seeing today, uh, aside of, of course, all that's happening within uh, the large cap space, is in some of the mid-sized uh, auto angs. Uh, you know, people are circumspect about, and maybe rightly so, but just look at Subros, for example, 10% higher. There is SMLA Suzu about 8.27% higher. Minna Industries is about 8% higher at 287. Igarshi Motors, 7.7%. Apollo Tires has had a 7% up move today. So auto ancillaries have actually had a fairly decent outing in the session, you would have to say. Um, Amar Singh, any of these stocks stand out for you? Yeah, I would say looking at uh, uh, Subros, what I see is that uh, the stock is uh, uh, has consolidated and has uh, today uh, taken out uh, its resistance level of around 165.66. But again, on the upside, 180.85 is the, the level where it could meet with uh, resistance. So if someone is long, one should either look at uh, booking profits, but I wouldn't recommend buying at the current levels. Okay. Remember, it's, uh, it, I mean, Subros is not just another ordinary company. I think it's got some uh, relevance uh, because it's the leader in the car air conditioning segment, sole supplier to Maruti, also entered into room air conditioning as well. So, Interesting business mix. I don't quite know how it will shape up, but mind you, it's not an ordinary auto ank. Okay. Now, um, Yogesh, Pharma has had a bit of a mixed outing in the session today. So the likes of Strides, or I think AstraZeneca, which has released a statement saying that they would be beginning some trials for uh, uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 related tests, they've done well. But a lot of others, Ipka Labs, et cetera, et cetera, have all come off. Torrent Pharma is down in the session today. Dr. Reddy's is down 2%. Fundamentally, if you track this space, Yogesh Mehta, is there a stock that is still worth buying? Uh, Neeraj, uh, now pharma space, we have done a discussion earlier also, wherein uh, due to this COVID-19 and HCQ related uh, 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 manufacturers, they were Ipka and Medila, they have had a decent run up. But post this announcement recently, yesterday evening, that uh, it is no more, it's a diagnosed, uh, it's a valid diagnosed or the, the right uh, dosage for the COVID-19 uh, uh, rehabilitation. So I would say that uh, that has given some kind of a, a profit booking into these counters. But on the pharma space, I think it's almost done because uh, too sharp a run up. And if uh, I have to select further from here, then Aurobindo Pharma, which is still uh, already it has been doubled from uh, its uh, bottom in this financial year. Uh, sorry, the last financial year, then this can be looked at below uh, around 550 to 575 level. Currently, it is around 600, 620 or somewhere. So that can be looked at. And IPCA with NCQ, uh, the fundamental remains the same. It's the uh, it's the Ratlam plant is also now started uh, after the US FDA uh, import ban and manufacturing ban for last three, four, five years. So I would say around 1500 odd you are getting IPCA. Then again, you can see some 30, 40 percent appreciation in next one, one and a half year. So that is one I would uh, bet for from this uh, power space. Okay, so do watch out. But mind you, the rest of the pharma pack has looked slightly wobbly in the session today. What is also looking weak today is Pidilite, uh, by the way. So mind, be mindful of that. I've already discussed about HUL. Colgate Palmolive is down about 2%. So FMCG has had a bit of an issue in the session, you would have to say. Um, you know, the other other one, and, and these, uh, there is an upgrade on the battery makers today. I think by Nomura, if I'm not wrong, or one of the brokerages, I'm forgetting which brokerage, but there's an upgrade. Um, the, the upgrade had a higher price target for Amara Raja as opposed to Excite. What we've seen today is that while Amara Raja may have done whatever it has done, Excite is up 7%, 156 and counting today. Like I said, it's probably a day for auto angst, and these are specialized businesses, batteries, but they're doing well. Um, Yogesh, uh, any thoughts on either Amara Raja or Excite fundamentally? Uh, see, Amara is the largest player in the battery manufacturing in the car and the inverter. So, uh, and Excite is too. But there's a component of insurance into Excite very slightly, which is not much significant. But I think uh, it may catch a fancy because of 140, 130. I think uh, a downside for this company is rem remains very limited because all the negatives are priced in all, all the shutdown of plants and everything. So from here on, downside risk is very limited. But upside in Excite would be limited again. It won't. It can't. Uh, uh, I, I don't project more than 180 rupees in the best case scenario for uh, Excite. But in an Amar Raja, again, I think raw material cost is equally good, uh, equally beneficial for both the companies. But uh, with the largest uh, largest uh, wallet share and the player into the segment, I think uh, inverter as well as the car batteries 
Amagaja would be a preferred bet from current level because the technology is much better than the XI. Hmm. Okay, so do watch out for both of these names. Um, Amar Singh, uh, Excite is such a robust mover today. Any thoughts here? We are doing is we are, we are looking at uh, Excite. If you look at Excite, Excite has uh, witnessed a significant rally today. Currently, it's trading around 155, 156 odd levels. Uh, and even on the weekly charts, you are seeing that the stock has breached its uh, crucial zone of resistance, coming around 155. So uh, one can look at holding XI and it can trade towards 160, 165 levels. Okay, it could trade towards 160 or 165 levels. It's not a very stiff uptick, but an uptick nevertheless. The markets are staying steady, viewers. Uh, so about 2% for the Sensex, about 2% for the Nifty Bank. It's not a bad day, you would have to say. We've had three strong days now. Yes, maybe the question could come in that how can, how much can this continue? Is it looking overstretched? Uh, and can it pull back under any fashion whatsoever? Um, all of these are pertinent questions. We'll also try and get you what daily news are recommending in the session today. So that'll be the other thing. Um, but mind you, while we're just waiting for Darshan to come in, I just want to mark one more stock, the intraday of Adani Ports. It's had a big rocking move in the last few minutes of trade. It's now the top gainer on the Nifty, incidentally. Adani Ports is 293 and counting. A bit of a, a tug of war between that and HDFC. But I think Adani Ports is doing or oh, hitting all the right notes. Amar, a quick 30 second view, not too long. Uh, Amar Singh on um, Adani Ports. Yeah, I would say Adani Ports uh, uh, technically is uh, positive on the charts, on the short term charts, but on the long term charts, I would say it is uh, still negative. So I would say somewhere on the upside, 300, 305 is a crucial zone of resistance for the stock where we could witness profit booking. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, as I said, let's get a sense of what dealing rooms are recommending in the session today. Darshan is here with his channel checks. Darshan, good afternoon. What are you learning? Yeah, so Neeraj, I think uh, today it's banking that's done well, but uh, among the other sectors, I think pharma is one sector in which uh, there is a lot of anticipation that is coming in. Today, a lot of counters have rallied like Strides or AstraZeneca because of their announcements in terms of COVID. But uh, the big move probably is anticipated in Orbindo Pharma. Uh, there is a buzz of a potential clearance for the unit 7. Now, uh, it's not the largest unit for them, but uh, if this happens, uh, that would mean that Orbindo Pharma is totally out of the US FDA regulatory issue. So this is the last pending plant, uh, which probably needs a, a clearance. So uh, the street is anticipating some bit of positive announcement that could come in, uh, and that's something that's been spoken about. The other one, if you take a look at the media stocks, the two frontline broadcasters, Sun TV and Z TV, both of them have seen strong moves today. Uh, Sun TV, for one, uh, has seen very high volumes. Uh, it's moved about the 50 DMA today with decent volume. So uh, that is something that dealers indicate that a lot of chartists have on their mind and they are watching that counter closely. And finally, DV's lab for one is something that dealers are talking about. Again, a lot of announcement in terms of uh, testing for key products uh, overseas and DV's being the largest API producer in India is something in which some of the foreign funds are active in trade. Okay, well, a lot of pharma chat. Thanks a lot for that, Darshan. Uh, we've. Uh, I don't know if we if we took some technical checks on some of the pharma names, but since Darshan was so um, confident about uh, what his sources are telling him about Aurobindo, can I ask Amar Singh for a quick chart check on Aurobindo? Yeah, uh, looking at Aurobindo, technically on the charts, yes, the, uh, the charts are definitely strong on the short term, intermediate term trend as well. So clearly reflects that uh, the stock uh, uh, could uh, uh, witness an up move. But for that, the stock is having some resistance around 640, 650 zone. So if that is taken out, then the next leg of rally towards 700 is quite possible. Hmm. Okay. Uh, before we take in closing strategies, uh, I want to come to you, Yogesh, with the, uh, a check on the, the biggest uh, consumer facing businesses of the last rally or the last few years and how they have been sidelined. They don't even come up in conversations anymore. Would you be a buyer into, say, a page industries, um, a symphony, or for that matter, actually a polycap too. It's had a fabulous last nine, 12 months, but doesn't come up in conversations as often now. Uh, yeah, Neeraj, the man, you mentioned the name like Page Industries. Those are out of flavor for a prolonged period of time. I think the last rally was there two years back and post it is uh, continuously uh, nosedived. I think around 16,000 to 
18,000 level at current juncture or current uh, price band, uh, it would be good enough to buy into these stocks because already uh, the P moderation has happened. The slowdown in the in the economy has happened now, but the slowdown into their sales uh, with the growth rate, with the 50% growth rate earlier to now uh, uh, to now they are into a uh, 20% kind of a growth rate. So I think the plants are very much, they are working with the full capacity and uh, it would be good enough to buy from current level. Nevertheless, you will not see your price. Yeah, I can hear you. Yogesh, we can hear you too. Okay, so uh, that page industries, I think uh, the uh, it is very uh, clearly is a good bet for a long-term investor. And uh, rest of the name, like uh, the venture you mentioned, others were Page and others were Neeraj. Yeah, Page, Symphony, Polycab. Polycab, yes, but we have seen recently good run up, but uh, still with 16% market share, I think if there is any correction towards 600 would be good enough to get into. And Symphony, I have some doubts because uh, earlier we have seen a strong run up. But uh, I don't foresee that the demand will increase further because not many unorganized players are also there into the into the uh, competition. So probably we may see kind of we, we may see some stagnancy into the business right now, at least for next one year. So uh, rest of the two names, I would say yes, they can definitely get into. And disclaimer, I have uh, page industries in the portfolio of my advisory PM. Okay. Uh, by the way, viewers, uh, I you know we'll take in closing strategies and then we will talk about ICICF Prudential. And I want to specifically focus on this simply because after a big short covering leg move, there's a bit of a pause. We've seen some further buying in the session today. It's not that some of the others have done well. Max Financial, for example, is in the red. HDFC is hardly moved, but ICICF Prudential is seeing some buying. It is undervalued compared to the peers, and maybe it smacks of some bit of institutional activity. We'll talk about this, but first. Closing strategies, Manav Chopra, your top closing strategy. Yes, at the current level, I like to go with a buy on Tata Consumptions. Uh, basically, the stock is in a short term uptrend momentum, continuously forming a series of high tops and bottoms and is likely to also close above yesterday's closing. Uh, uh, in last four trading session, uh, higher lows is definitely a quite an important uh, structure in such markets. So this is a buy a stop loss of 345 on the lower side for an upside target of 375. Okay, this is a short term play, Mana. Yes, absolutely for a, a period of two to three. Okay, uh, Amar Singh, your top closing strategy. Yeah, I would say that uh, uh, one can look at going short in Voltas. Uh, technically, uh, the stock continues to remain uh, bearish on the charts. On the daily charts, you've seen the stock consolidating, but any pullback towards 495, 500 odd levels can be used as a, a shorting opportunity with a stop loss of 511 and a target of uh, 469 on the downside. Okay. So those are a couple of names, Tata Consumer as well as Voltas from our experts. Now, like I said, I see a potential and I do want to talk about it both fundamentally and technically it's an important stock uh, simply because of the kind of movement that I can see on the screen in the last couple of days. Uh, Yogesh, within insurance plays, I know you like HDFC Life. I want to ask you if you would be comfortable with ICICI Prudential as well. Um, yeah, with the with the numbers and the management commentary yesterday, I think uh, ICICI Prudential would be a uh, would be a good bet again. With uh, uh, price to embedded value is around uh, two times price to embedded value currently quoting at. And uh, the way management have uh, sounded positive for uh, growth for next three to four years. Nevertheless, the March quarter was subdued because of the COVID-19 and the first quarter will remain there. But 20% uh, decline into this, 20% uh, of IY decline for the last quarter is very much justified. And uh, uh, there is no other competition threat also. So insurance business per se will remain very immune and the growth will remain, is immense growth potential is there. I would say that valuation wise, uh, there is a vast difference between ICC Pro and HDFC. It's the four times price to ambient value and uh, ICC Pro is at around two times price to ambient value. Uh, equally good open opportunity in ICC potential at the current juncture. Okay. Um, Manav Chopra, technically ICICI Prudential? Uh, yes, Neeraj, it's very well placed. In fact, uh, uh, it has seen a good breakout on the weekly charts. Last 
five uh, weeks high has been reached today and is also closing above its important key averages. Uh, important thing uh, that has come to notice is that there has been a good amount of short covering that has taken place and now the price structure and the momentum structure has given a bullish cross. So keeping that in play, this stock can also play a very good uh, BTSD trade plus it can also be initiated for at least two to three trading sessions. I believe a stop loss on the lower side of 390 can be placed. A short term upside target of 415 and 420 is quite likely. Mm, 415, 420. But viewers, you have to also keep in mind that it's a stock that is has a bit of a rally already behind uh, behind as mana was saying 26 percent in the last one month so it's recouped the losses of the last three months in the last one month alone and is uh, or some bit of the losses let me put it that way and has gained quite a bit in the last two or three sessions as well so you have to have that at the back of your mind. Two two three one for HUL. Asian Pains is the other one. We haven't quite discussed it. Crude price fall should ideally over positively for Asian, but it hasn't, and the stock is corrected. So do watch out for this one as well. Uh, quick thoughts, Amar Singh. Asian Pains. How do the charts look? Yeah, I would say Asian Pains uh, is close to its key resistance level because earlier also it's unable to uh, breach the 1900 mark. So for, and uh, recently also it had made a high of 1864. So that's a very crucial zone of resistance. That's the reason we are seeing selling uh, and profit booking around uh, around those levels. So I would say that rather wait for Asian pains for a correction towards 1700 levels, which is a strong support zone. Um, Yogesh, before Reliance results tomorrow, quick thoughts here. We're very close to market open. Yogesh, we'll have to make it quick, but Reliance Industries. Um, I think the numbers would be subdued and uh, oil, uh, uh, the uh, refining margin will be a subdued one and the crude price which is declining will have some impact on the results. Only thing is right issue, we have to see the uh, what the price it would be and in what ratio is it in favor of the investors. Otherwise, it is fairly valued and all the uh, Facebook and Geo deal is already priced near to 1500 rupees. So it leaves hardly any upside. But uh, let us see the rights and the results would be subdued. There is no much, uh, nobody's betting on that. But it is the right issue which is catching the eye of all the traders. Okay, so it should be rights issue that should be focus point. Yogesh Mehta, I take a moment to thank you for joining me today, giving us your perspective. Appreciate your time. Pleasure, Neeraj. Manav Chopra, Reliance Industries ahead of results. Can you trade it? Uh, real, uh, honestly, Neeraj, it's it's currently in a no trade zone. Uh, since last couple of trading session, it has been trading in a very side consolidation band i believe on the low side 1350 and on the upside 1500 is is the range so it's right now in the mid of the range um, and usually you know we've seen a good amount of volatility that comes post the result because the results are likely to be posted post the market and the effect will come on monday so for me uh, i uh, since the prices have already rallied from the levels of 900 to 1400 i think the best is to stay away or book profits and be light in this scenario because mark this a large cap stock which has already rallied 20 25 percent from the lows i believe there could be some bit of profit uh, booking can also come into the picture in spite of good results so for now it's it's better to be aside in this hmm. okay well maybe that's uh, uh, that's a pertinent view as well uh, cool uh mana thanks for that just stay on we'll take in closing thoughts from you but here's how the markets are shutting short one and a six 1.6 percent higher not a bad uh, day of trade and the nifty bank to about one and a half percent yes we could squibble around oh it's off from the highs of the day and all but it's crossed that important resistance level of 9400 with with fair degree of ease and uh, even though we're not closing at the highest point of the day i think we're doing reasonably okay for ourselves what's not doing well access bank results reaction three and a half percent hul the overhang of a block uh, bloomberg exclusive two and a half percent lower asian pains two and a half percent lower Weakness in Britannia, 1% lower. Titan, about a percent lower. Indescent Bank also corrects, and Kotak Bank too, and Reliance side of the numbers is flat. What is doing well? HDFC, Hindalco, Adani Ports, HCL Technologies, 500. What a big, big move for HCL Technologies, 6% higher. HDFC Bank, though, has said, really done very well. Um, 971. I think uh, it, was eight, it was 820. A couple of days, the day before the result, it was at 820 or thereabouts. From there, it's just had a one-way move. Two days before the result, it was 820 and now it's at 970. Uh, SBI in the green, that's giving support to the Nifty Bank and Bajaj Finance off the highs of the day, but does reasonably okay. The broader end of the spectrum, well, peppered with uh, some gains and losses, mixed bag for pharma. So AstraZeneca, Strides, etc. do well. Ica, 
Cadilla, etc. don't. Uh, but what is doing well? As I said, strides up 20%, sale up 10%. There is strength in City Union Bank up about 8%. Uh, some mid cap auto angs, so Igarshi, Minda, Subros, etc. Those have not done too badly for themselves. Bharat Forge is up 6.5% too. Uh, it's not done well. Well, Hathaway Cable comes off a little bit, um, 4%. Uh, as I said, Ipka has come off, Colgate Palmolive has come off. Cummins looks weak, Aditya Billa Fashion looks weak. So those are a few names that have looked slightly wobbly in trade today. And some stocks that uh, I particularly have in focus um, and just want to monitor them. So some of the specialty chemical names, the likes of uh, Deepak Nitrite, 509, up about 5% in trade. Vinati Organics doing well. And ICICI Prudential, something that I just spoke about, a really strong move there. A five and a half percent higher, 404, 405. Let's see how this one does. Ahead of numbers, Tech Mahindra is not doing too badly. So be mindful of that as well. And Tata Consumer Products, something that Mana Chopra suggested a buy up about two and a half. But this is how the markets have shut shop. Good, strong closing. Question is, can we last more? Um, Amar, I'll come to you first. Uh, I, I said at the start of the week that for the markets to do well, the banks needed to perform. Banks have performed. We've had three strong days of a bounce in a pocket that was otherwise almost considered untouchable until last Friday, especially the NBFCs too. Um, do you think the juice is out or do you think there could be more in store? Yeah, I would say that uh, uh, technically looking at the indices, I would say today's high is something which is going to be very important. If uh, uh, if the markets are not able to take out today's high, then we could witness selling pressure from these levels because these are very crucial uh, intermediate term resistance levels. So we could witness some uh, selling pressure going forward. And yes, but if Nifty sustains above 9,600 levels, then it opens the door towards 9,800 levels. Okay. Um... What about you, Manav? Uh, I would ask a similar question. I mean, the NBFCs have been piggybacking the banks as well and doing very well. Can this party continue? But it's expiry tomorrow. Would you foresee maybe some profit booking too? See, yes. Uh, uh, one important point that I like to highlight, the last uh, half an hour trade of Bank Nifty Neeraj, the, we have seen continuous decline in Bank Nifty from 3 p.m. to the closing. So uh, there has been a profit taking which has taken place. There has been price rejection at higher levels. So uh, like I mentioned at the start, you will see uh, profit booking coming at higher levels. So the best time is to limit your positions and uh, one has to actually wait for some clear, clear scenario. Also, I like to go one step forward saying that when I'm looking at the old, uh, world market charts like US markets, the Hang Seng markets, you know, all these are nearing to an important resistance hurdle. So for me, uh, the next couple of weeks uh, for the uh, equity markets as a whole would be uh, something to look at in terms of risk reward for long positions. I believe it is a time to liquidate your positions or be light in terms of trading uh, opportunities. Okay, we will leave it at that, gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking to us today at Bloomberg Quint. Thank you. And viewers, on that note, uh, it's a wrap on this leg of countdown from all of us who put the show together. Thank you so much for watching. Just a quick programming note. In a day or two, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, maybe next, maybe Friday, or maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, uh, we will bring you a truncated version, but a more energized and a more practical version of countdown. We'll start off at about 3 p.m. So remember, uh, the show that you tune in uh, will probably start about 15, 20 minutes or half an hour later, but we'll try and make it as action-packed as we possibly can. Thank you so much for watching.